I'm going to show you some magic. It's the real thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's all the real thing. Marvel is so overrated. Hello and welcome to SumSub, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. My name is Bradley and today we're going to talk about realistic deepfakes, like the recent one with Tom Cruise. What's up TikTok? What threats they pose and how average users should adapt to this new reality. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. Whether what we see and hear is always as it seems. President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. I will lose my mind. <laughs> it's the real thing. <laughs> so, Tom Cruise's TikTok account was recently created. Now, Tom shared a video where he eats a lollipop, plays golf, and I think does coin tricks. But this account has actually been deep faked, and it's actually the most realistic example to date. Tom Cruise's TikTok has actually been talked about by the world's largest media because in just a couple of days, the video got millions of views and almost 700,000 people subscribed to the account. So understandably, people in the comments are utterly confused. <laughs> but this is something that's quite predictable. I mean, people usually expect deepfakes to look something like this. By looking at these kinds of pictures, you can easily identify when something's been deepfaked. However, this is the real crux of the problem. People are not the only ones that are being tricked. So users actually checked Tom Cruise's deepfakes using an AI-powered deepfake detection service, and voila, the deepfakes passed the check. But look, let's imagine if the fake Tom Cruise announced on his TikTok that he was collecting money for a new film. Or maybe he urged his fans to storm the Capitol of the White House. Do you actually remember when scammers hacked the verified and official accounts of Bill Gates and Elon Musk, I think it was on Twitter. They posted tweets asking to send Bitcoins to a certain wallet. They then promised to double the sum, right? Now, these tweets were quickly deleted, obviously. But before that, users had actually transferred $50,000 to the scammers. What's more, we are subconsciously afraid of identity theft. I'm not talking about just stolen passwords or personal account numbers, maybe personal photos and videos at a stretch. I'm actually talking about a technology that can, on my behalf, say or do things that I would have never done or said. Why are politicians in all of Washington so concerned about deep fakes? Deep fakes can put words in people's mouths. You know, make people say things like vagina and, and poop. Now, people tried to use deepfakes for political frame-ups right off of the bat. Nancy Pelosi's speech, for example, was manipulated to make her look intoxicated. And we thought we had some level of agreement, but you never know with this president of the United States. So that's what happened this morning. And we thought we had some level of agreement, but you never know with this president of the United States. So that's what happened this morning. It's to absolutely no surprise that the former US President Donald Trump tweeted about the video, and the message then swept through all social networks. We're most afraid that deepfakes can be used in this way. But it's important to remember that deepfakes can actually be used ethically in the modern world. For example, to improve image resolution of old or low quality videos, right? You don't need the classic upscale anymore. The network redraws the image. Look at how the quality has changed. Deepfakes can synchronize lips and speech, right? And this process is called lip sync. You might have heard that before. Now, it's worth noting that adjusting lip movements to any linguistic articulation would actually be a real breakthrough in terms of film and TV dubbing. Let's see how this actually worked in a PSA uh, that was aimed at combating malaria with David Beckham. Now here, he speaks nine languages. Watch the lips. Now let's take a look at another example here. These are shots from Rogue One, the Star Wars story. Now the face on the left of the video was edited by a professional team and CGI equipment. 
both of which are kind of expensive by the way. Now this process only took 24 hours using an $800 PC, I think around 500 images of Carrie Fisher from the original Star Wars movies. Well, the result's not faultless, but it's still pretty impressive, right? So here's a later version. I'm sure you'll agree the result looks much more real. Help. In the future, deep fake technology could save the film industry a lot of time and money. The self-learning algorithm powering deep fakes was invented back in 2014 by Ian Goodfellow, a then Stanford student. The technology has traditionally only been used among AI researchers and developers. The algorithm is called GAN, which stands for Generative Adversarial Network. Now, two neural networks compete with each other, like an art forger and the gallerist. The former forges paintings, and the latter identifies the forged artwork. Now, the forger is the generative neural network. The gallerist, however, is the discriminative network. Imagine that a forger, for instance, tries to paint Mona Lisa for the first time, but instead ends up with a lot of digital noise within the image. Now, the gallerist has seen the painting a million times, he knows every detail, and can easily identify a fake. So, the discriminative network learns by comparing real images so it can detect things such as digital noise within an image, for example. Now, the generative network will adjust to the discriminative and paint until the gallerist approves the forward painting. So that's actually until it becomes indistinguishable from the original, despite being anything other than the original, right? Now, if the forger wants to paint better, it needs to hone its skills. Same for the gallerist, right? The longer the networks interact with each other, the better results they have. I actually came up with an idea to make a deep fake. Can I do that? Is it easy? How much will it cost? Will it be realistic? Well, deep fakes with Tom Cruise were made by a Belgian visual effects expert. I think his name's Christopher Um. Now, he's one of the most skilled deep fake creators in the world. There's an interesting quote here. He said, I'd like to show people the technical possibilities of these things. I don't intend to use it in any way where I would upset people. I just want to show them what's possible in a few years. So, here's what you need to do. Number one, find someone who looks like Tom Cruise. Check. <laughs> Tom Cruise's impersonator, Miles Fisher, is Um's good friend, so that works. Fisher perfectly imitates Cruise's facial expressions here, his movements and his articulations. Secondly, it's time to use the machine. To be precise, you ought to use a neural network model that's been trained on a lot of Tom Cruise's own films. Now lastly, Um actually manually processed the videos frame by frame in Adobe After Effects and used DaVinci Resolve for color correction. Can I do the same? I think it's unlikely. I'm pretty underqualified, right? If I tried, the result would look something like... Well... So that's why I look for help. It took me a couple of hours, and to be honest, I checked many different YouTube channels that make deep fake videos, but I did find one with contact information. So, I got in contact with an anonymous author who introduced himself as John. He actually asked me tons of questions. I think some of them were, uh, will we change the whole head or just the face? What will the resolution be and the lighting? Which celebrity are we faking? I also want to mention, John asked for a photo of mine to measure my skull. And yeah, so this is actually important for the quality of the final face. Now luckily, I didn't need to record any videos for the neural network to train. Why? Well, I actually have my old YouTube channel where John found some videos that are actually suitable for the network training. So he started the ball rolling. Step one, search for material. These can be feature films, YouTube videos, etc. The main thing is to find as many variants and varieties of a face with a lot of emotions, facial expressions, tilts and turns of the head, etc. Step two is to chop this video into frames. So the entire video needs to be split into frames and this can take a very long time. After this, the neural network automatically extracts faces. We select the required parameters and then we launch the neural network. Step three is to export the faces. Of course, the neural network can sort faces according to different criteria, but at the end, we'll still have to go through everything and clean our sets of uh, low quality images and debris, for instance. Step four is to train an XSEG mask. To make a really good fake, it's advisable to mark and train the areas of both source and destination faces. These are the so-called masks. Step five is to train a model. It goes without saying that the better and more powerful your equipment is, then the better and the faster the deepfake will turn out. Step six is to merge. The final stage for the neural network is to connect the result we received in the training process to that of the original video. And lastly, step seven is post-production. We 
We look at the results and then go to the video editor for final processing. Then it all comes down to the skills and abilities of the producer. So remember we saw an example of the deep fake at the start of the video? Well, let's look at that again. What do you think? Marvel is so overrated. What if I was a criminal? How many people could I have tricked? Well, none, I think. But would you have believed it? Let me know in the comments. I'd be quite interested to know. So, in conclusion, my data set was made up of 8,000 frames, which took three to four hours to create. In terms of the total time, it took three days. And the total cost was around $250. Protection technologies have luckily evolved together with these deep fakes. Now, the University of Buffalo actually developed a tool that automatically recognizes deep fake photos. I think it does this by analyzing light reflections in the eyes, which is quite interesting, right? When we look at something, the image of it reflects in our eyes. In real photos, reflections in both eyes usually have the same shape and color, right? But computers, they can't make two similar reflections as they combine many photos into one. Now other tools analyze digital noise. The structure of natural and computer-generated noise can differ greatly, which also helps us to identify fake. On the topic of protection, let's look at the things that we're actually protecting from, right? Experts have named the three most dangerous deepfake methods. So number one is deepfake voice phishing. This is a type of deepfake technology that can actually successfully simulate a voice. This is the most profitable method that scammers use nowadays. Actually, a good case study for you. In 2019, scammers used this cloned voice technology to extort $243,000 from a British energy company's CEO. That's mad. Number two, fabricated private remarks or deepfake videos where public figures brainwash people and manipulate public opinion. You guys remember the well-known videos with Barack Obama? President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Finally, we need to be aware of synthetic social botnets or fake social network accounts. Modern neural networks are great for creating people who genuinely have never existed. If you go to thispersondoesnotexist.com, you'll see a lot of faces. Just refresh the page, right? The funny thing is, all of these people don't actually exist. They were all created by AI. And this AI can also generate deep fake texts that imitate real posts in social networks. These kinds of fake accounts can look real and they can actually get followers. <laughs> Imagine a pool of these accounts used to defame a company or a product. And as for my own personal advice, well, number one, be alert when consuming information online, particularly when the topics that you're engaging with are especially divisive or inflammatory. Number two, seek multiple independent sources of information. Don't assume that an online persona or individual is legitimate just based on the existence of video, photographs, or audio on their profile, right? It might be deep fake. And most importantly, try not to post information about yourself online that's important. That's it for today. Anyway, see you in the next video, and be safe.